Louisville, Colorado just made history as the first city in America to run an all-electric garbage truck fleet. But how did it happen? And what's it like to actually drive one of these high-tech machines? Before we go any further, if you're enjoying clean trucking news and videos, you can get more delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up for our free weekly newsletter using the link in the description below. It all started when Louisville began evaluating bids to replace their aging garbage truck fleet. So Louisville operates a trash fleet through outside services, outside mm -hmm. vendors. Every five years, we competitively bid that contract. Mm -hmm. And for the past 10 years or whatnot, we've had clean natural gas trucks. But for this round of contract bidding, we also asked the market to see if there's electric fleet available for a bid price. And we were able to get one bid in our process that was able to offer that through Republic Services. And okay. So today we are using an electric fleet. You might expect a cutting edge electric fleet to come with a hefty price tag. But in Louisville, the switch only adds about $5 to each resident's monthly bill. By comparison, running their previous fleet of natural gas trucks costs the city $20 per household. So for our consumers and for the city's goals, it was kind of a, a no-brainer to go sure. with the electric fleet. Now, what have been some of the feedback so far from the public themselves? What do they have to say? Sure, the, the public has been positive. I mean, I mm -hmm. think it feels good for people to see an electric uh, trash truck coming down their road. Right. There's the, again, there's less noise when the truck's mm -hmm. coming through the neighborhood. And then there's also that feel good of doing the right thing for the climate. Absolutely. So that's kind of been the feedback we've gotten. For most fleets, transitioning to electric means working closely with utility providers to make sure charging infrastructure can be installed. But in Louisville's case, that challenge never came up. Their all-inclusive contract with Republic Services meant Republic handled every part of the charging setup. When you were first putting the project together, you had to work with your local utility, which here in Colorado is Excel Energy. Now, can you walk me through some of the steps with that when you told them you wanted to switch from natural gas to battery electric? Yeah, so from the city's perspective, this uh, we, we hire a vendor okay. to move our trash from A to B, or our recycle, or our compost. So we rely on that vendor to work with Excel. So in our case, uh, Republic Services is who delivers our service with mm -hmm. the electric fleet. Uh, they had been working with Excel okay. over many years to bring that infrastructure into their facility to be able to provide the uh, both the charging infrastructure, mm -hmm. but then also the supporting electrical infrastructure to move that much current to their area. So basically, Republic Services provides everything from a pricing plan to the trucks to the charging. And that's all the city of Louisville had to do? Exactly. Louisville's contract is a turnkey contract. I see. So we put out there to provide the service. It's up to the vendor to house their fleet, procure their fleet, provide the fleet within the parameters that we described. As with any new technology, there are bound to be challenges. But so far, Louisville's electric garbage truck fleet has been operating without a hitch. Have there been any downsides? Uh, we're still learning. So I would say from our perspective, no. We have backup clauses in our contracts that if the electric trucks don't operate properly and they're not on the road mm -hmm. for enough time frame sure. over the month, like we don't pay the full amount. So we pay mm -hmm. a pro rata. And in the case where maybe electric truck wouldn't work, uh, there's a clean natural gas truck as a backup. So I see. for our contract, no downsides. Just for the electric truck performance, I think they're still kind of figuring out some of the cold weather cycles when it's sure. really cold. Nothing that's game changing. I think it's just a normal learning process with any new technology. The electric trucks rolling through Louisville's neighborhoods are McNeilius Volterra ZSLs, three side loaders and one rear loader, replacing the city's four natural gas vehicles. To learn more about how these next generation trucks operate, we spoke with Republic Services, the company responsible for keeping Louisville's waste collection running. It is about six in the morning here in Commerce City, Colorado. And here with me today is... Nicholas Shar. So I'm a supervisor for uh, residential services here in uh, Commerce City. I'm in charge of running the operation for Lafayette and Louisville. Louisville is our big city that, mm -hmm. you know, took over for the EVs. In Commerce City, Colorado, Republic Services operates what's known as a return to base model. Trucks leave each morning for routes and return to the same facility afterward. This model is well suited for electric fleets. 
since it simplifies charging logistics and allows the trucks to recharge overnight. Right here is the charging port where the access is. It's just like all the other EV vehicles. You can actually use any of the EV chargers that are out there to charge the truck. And you plug the port in and they'll hit the button for start charge and then it charges throughout the night. How long does the charge take? We can get a fast charge on it in 20 to 30 minutes, which brings us up to, say if it's at 40%, we can bring up 80% into uh, probably about 20 minutes time. Okay. So yeah, a driver can run um, probably seven hours on the 80%. When he gets back to the yard, he'll probably be right at running. If he was at 80% charge, he'll bring back right at 10%. If he's fully charged when he leaves in the morning, he'll return back to the yard with right around 20 to 30%, and that's on an average of seven to 10 hour day. The truck stands out for its focus on driver comfort, high tech safety features, and a tight turning radius that's ideal for navigating residential streets and cul-de-sacs. What are some of the best things that you've heard or feedback you've heard from drivers? Comfortability. Okay. So uh, I've been in the industry 30 years and I wish I had one. <laughs> uh, the features that some of my drivers are liking, the heated seats, Oh yeah, the heated seats are a yep. real big hit. And not only that, but you're not bounced around as much as you would be in one of the other trucks, right? I mean, it, it seems like a driver actually designed it, right? Because Good point, yes. Yeah, it, it's really comfortable for them, so. To get a first-hand look at how these electric trucks operate on the road, we join a Republic Services driver on their morning route through Louisville. All right, so now uh, I'm riding with Dr David, the driver. David, you said you've been working here for a couple years now. How long have you been driving these uh, McNeilius uh, Volterra ZSLs? Uh, it's been a couple months that we've had them. A couple months? Yeah. You, uh, you, did you previously drive the uh, diesel, natural gas powered uh, yeah, trucks? Yeah, diesel. We got a couple of diesels and we got some CNG trucks on here. CNG, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the battery electric one compared to the uh, to those two? Uh, they're a lot quieter. A lot quieter. The battery electric is a lot quieter. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the windshield is really wide here. Yeah. You. I mean, you can see a lot better out of these as well. As we enter the first neighborhood, David checked the truck's joystick and arm to make sure everything was working properly then gave me a walkthrough of the 360 degree camera system. So we got the hop review where the trash is gonna get thrown into. The front view, which is right here on the big windshield, as you can see. Mm -hmm. The rear view, yep. left side front, which is where you're sitting. Rear on the tailgate, my side right here, camera, and the right side rear, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it is very you cool. You got cameras everywhere all around the truck. With everything checked out and ready to go, David began his route, putting the electric arm to work and emptying the first of many garbage cans. It's a little bumpy in here, but still, it's not loud. Yeah, it's not fairly dramatic like the other trucks are. Oh, really? Yeah. Were they, with, with, with cabins a lot louder? Yeah. At the end of the route, I asked David what other drivers might appreciate about the electric truck. He pointed out that everything operates faster than on a CNG or diesel model. The arm that lifts the cans, the blade in the hopper, and most notably, the acceleration. You can hop on the highway like if you're in your own vehicle. You know, no hesitation, you know, quick and responsive. So you can hop on the highway safely, you know, at a, at a fairly decent speed. I can imagine that being kind of challenging in like the older trucks. Yeah where they take, you know, 10 minutes to get up onto the highway, you know, at a slow speed. With the successful rollout of an all electric fleet, Louisville has set a new standard in sustainable waste collection. This could mark the beginning of a much wider shift across cities nationwide. Granted, Louisville only has four EV garbage trucks for now, which isn't many compared to larger cities, but every city, big and small, must start somewhere if they want cleaner air, less noise, and happier drivers and residents. Louisville, Colorado has done exactly that. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and please let us know in the comments what types of alternative powered commercial vehicles you want to learn more about. See you all next time.